thing because we want a nice white yeah those I use very thin coat of polish I nudge my brush upward to the cuticle area so I don't bleed everything in there very thin you see that the cuticle area nice and flush Yeah, I mean, the natural tips are just freaking amazing. Look, light pressure, nudge the brush upward. A lot of you guys don't really understand how important it is to know how to polish. Polishing is one of the core techniques in nails, guys. You need to know how to polish or else you will never be able to do designs. A lot of advanced designs require proper polishing techniques. I'll do that again real close for you guys. Gel polishing, look. The brush is squared, but when I put light pressure, look, it becomes brown. Never flood cuticle again. Consistent strokes, I don't stop. I go all the way top to bottom. I don't wanna leave any polish behind. And this is just my first layer. I don't care if it has a little bit of streakiness because my second layer I'll be able to take over. For this design, I need a very, very, very white, white, but I don't want to use white powder because white powder is very pigmented and it's going to bleed all over the place and it's going to be hard to work with. So I use pretty much an off white for now, like a milky white and then I'm gonna polish it so that it's kind of generally the same whiteness. I'm gonna get anything on here. I just use my glove to be able to clean that up in there. And if you're still work new at polishing, just use, um, have a French brush out, clean out the cuticle before you cure. I see a lot of people don't clean the cuticle before they cure and they're like committed to it. I'm like, you're not committed to it until you, clear, you cure it, you know? Um, Take that extra few seconds to clean out that cuticle area. Why do you leave it stuck in the cuticle? It makes it look bad. I know, but perfect application means that when I do my polishing, it make everything even better. This is what why you have to be make sure your application is key because it reflects in your polish. If your application is bulky, your polish is gonna reflect that. Um, the pr reason why your, your application is bulky, it really takes on the polish just define everything. This design requires a very nice white, so that's why I have to do this. I could have done it with clear powder, but I decided to do it with the milky white and show you guys, one, the milky white powder, two, polishing techniques. See the cuticle area? Never flood again. You nudge the brush to the cuticle area, so that means you will have you don't have enough polish there to even flood the cuticle area. A lot of you guys are flooding the cuticle area because you're you're dropping a whole drop of polish there. That's why there's so much polish that's gonna gravity is gonna take up to the cuticle area. Remember, because it slopes down towards the cuticle area. I, for one hand, I nudge up just enough po polish so that it doesn't have enough to even flood. It just kind of seals in the cuticle area. Nope. I don't have my own acrylic because my monomer works with every acrylic out there. Um, I don't do my own acrylic because I work with a lot of other powders and I want to be able to give you guys the ability to see me work with a lot of other powders. Once I have my own acrylic, of course, I'm going to be only promoting my own acrylic. So, um, it, I'll have it. 
at some point, but just to, it'll be like my last thing I do in my career. Um, I really don't need my own acrylic. Of course, if I did have it, I have a lot of support, but um, I see a lot of people just enter this industry and the first thing they want to do is have their own acrylic. You have to really have to master and understand everything about acrylic before you have your own because it's, it's difficult to sell if you can't use your own acrylic and can't show people how good it is. Everybody will support you as long as you show them. A lot of people want to sell things and they're like, why, why aren't people buying my stuff? I'm like, have you tried using your stuff and show people how to use it? Uh, no, I don't really. Well, it's going to be difficult for someone to support you if they don't even see you using it, right? And now we do another thin coat. This will be our finishing coat. And we don't have to do too much. We're just going to very thin, make the white nice and solid. Keeping our shape is important. When you're polishing, you have to polish thin because you don't polish thin, your shape's gone. That nice crisp shape that you've been working hard for is gone. Okay? Two thin coats, all you need. It'll be properly cured. A lot of people run the issues. What do you see online? Why is my polish doing this? When it's all wrinkly and choppy, it's because you're painting too thick and the, and the machine's not curing it. That's why it's doing that. When you paint thin coats, the machine just cures it nicely. You don't have to run that issue. Doing very thin coats. Two thin coats will be able to get me nice coverage. Also, nice, um, nice curing. And I don't, I don't even cap the edge because I don't have to. I don't have to cap the edge because um, it won't lift, it won't peel because it's curing properly onto the nail. You do it too thick, it won't be able to cure through the, the gel polish, so it's gonna leave behind like kind of a a wetness underneath, and that's when it starts to peel after a couple of days. For those of you guys that are polishing, have issues with polishing. Woo! Sorry, I ran out of battery. I have to go low power mode. Go ahead, go ahead. And a lot of you guys they need to learn how to polish while holding the bottle of polish. See how I'm holding my bottle of polish while I'm polishing? I see a lot of you guys hold, putting the polish on the, the table and just dipping it in there. Nah, you need to be able to hold the polish bottle while you're polishing, okay? Have access to the polish right away. Be able to gauge how much you, you pick up. If you have the polish bottle sitting on the table, there's no way you're going to be able to gauge how much polish you pick up. You're just going to stick your, your brush in there and it's going to just take over and take up some whatever polish it wants to, okay? Hold the polish bottle in a tilt form like this. You'll be able to dip in and you'll be able to gauge how much you have before you put on the finger. Practice that. It's like one of the basic fundamentals of polishing. You have to be able to hold the polish bottle while you polish. Look at my hand positioning. Look at how I'm holding the polish. Look at how I'm polishing. It's rare that I do sets where I have to polish a whole set of nails, guys. So you guys pay attention to this. This is why I stress the importance of being able to polish. Plus, when you get your license, nail license, you can go to work in a nail salon and you can do pedicure, manicure. As long as you know how to polish, you can do pedicure, manicure, okay? You don't have to start doing acrylic to make money. A lot of nail techs in this industry and they think they have to do acrylic to make money. No, freaking 80% of the income comes from pedicure, manicures. Now I'm gonna do one coat of my matte top coat so I can start my design. This is my matte top coat, money back guarantee, one thin coat. Now you guys see why we have to paint thin? Certain designs require you to do a lot of layers. I need matte top coat for this design to come out. So if you polish thick, it's gonna take away the shape so much. Yes, I'm going to lose about 5 to 10% of the shape because I have to do the, the design. But honestly, 5% sacrifice for the design, not too bad. You won't even know to notice it. Yes, I'm going to use white. If I use color powder, I will definitely be able to save myself two layers. But the fact that I painted really thin really didn't matter. Make 
make sure that I get my mat all the way up to the cuticle area so I don't have any shiny spots. Right? Very nice thin coat of mat. Very thin. This mat just gives me a nice surface area for me to. I require. I need the mat to be able to do with my ink marbling, which oh, I'll be doing that watercolor marbling earlier. Oh, I need acetone. Live is jumpy probably because there you go. See that nice matted nails, shape still there. So now I do I take out my black. This is gel art paint. And this is my liner brush, long brush. Can you take your phone out and show me the picture? Yeah. Your phone's about to die, right? Oh yeah. Thanks for reminding me. I'll plug in the charger. Charging. It's charging, guys. Okay. So I will be drawing the branches first. The difference between gel polish and gel art paint is um, this won't bleed out and gel polish will and I want nice crisp lines. It's just the stems, the branches of my flowers later. I have to put in first. I'm gonna cure that first. I don't really need that much paint to be honest with you. This is gel art paint, so I can do it very thin. As you guys can see, it hasn't bled out yet. Which, if you were using a regular gel polish, um, of course the line is going to be not as defined, as crisp. This is why when we do artwork, we kind to, we tend to.
Okay. I'm just gonna assume the thumb has some branches somewhere. I can't see the thumb. So I'm just gonna bring the branches out. Dark to light branches. And I think that's good for the thumb. So I'm gonna cure this first before I add my flowers. Oh. <coughs> and we have to do this design in layers. Um, you have to do the branches first. Some people will do the opposite, and that, that's not the way you want to do that. It's going to make it a lot harder. He is having light to dark. <coughs> what smell is coming from this? Not, no smell. When you guys see me add the petals in, you're like, oh, that's what it's supposed to look like. You need to wear a mask this time. Okay, we're finishing up. This is the branches. You see that from, that from, coming from that side. All right, now we put this away and we're gonna bring out the ink. Use this nice, kind of like a pink, very vibrant. This is already cured. Open that one. Yeah, Thuy. Thuy. Do I mở cái acetone, Thuy? Go get some water. You three? Cho mượn bình acetone. 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 Thank you, thank you. Bình acetone nó nó mất tiêu rồi. Acetone, we're gonna need acetone for this next design. <sighs> Haven't done this one, open this. Haven't done this one in a long time, so bear with me. 
but ideally it should be as simple. Okay, just leave it, leave it, leave it. I'm just gonna put a tiny dot of this right there, or a lot of it. That. Three brush, which I have this pointed air right here. This is gonna be able to dab, dab, dab. Ideally, I should be able to create kind of petals for the flower. I feel like I need more. That's what I'm gonna do to get bigger petals. Not too much acetone. much acetone. Oh, that works. I put a little bit of ink into the um into the acetone. So it gives me that little look. That petal.
See the picture again? Now to do that with black. a black ink I'm just gonna place it where I need it I guess a little dab at the end there And you guys know what happens next, right? Yes, these designs are very intricate. It takes some time. <laughs> Not something that you can just do. This is the black ink I'm using a liner brush and just putting a little bit, a small dab of it. Cause I know that the moment I hit this with, with um, acetone that this black ink is gonna disperse and create kind of almost like a tulip petal look. And that would add to my design a little bit more. This is why we gotta finish our set fast cause we're gonna have more time to do the designs. All right, here we go guys. I'm gonna finish up one hand, and then I'm gonna show you guys the final look, and then I'm gonna do the other hand. For the sake of time, get you guys out of here. Get some fresh monomer. And now I'm gonna dab this little spots. <gasps> look how cute that looks! Look, look guys, look guys. Don't get too much ass to look. That's what we're looking for. Just this is how I exactly how I wanted it to look work out. Little kind of like spuds, like watercolor. And of course, I added some black in here because I want to get it kind of dark. You see the little black in here? I wanted to make it a little bit darker, just more pigmented. This is awesome. This is my first time attempting this design, so I'm kind of happy it turned out the way I wanted it. Look how cute that is. This watercolor spud thing, look, look, look at that. Doesn't that add to it, guys? It's like, this is what it was missing. I told you, when you finish and you add these things, it just ties everything in together so well. Oh, this one too. Let's go. Kind of clean up a little bit. Now 
Now I'm gonna mat this. Do you want it top coat or matted? Hmm? Do you want it shiny or matted? Shiny. Shiny? Mm -hmm. She want it shiny, so we're gonna shine it to protect everything. This is my top coat, very nice and shiny. And it should bring everything out. This is kind of almost like an abstracty design. You don't have to cure the ink. The ink just automatically dries on top of the mat. And this top coat is very nice. Nice and shiny, a nice thin coat. It cures UV LED. When? You trying this down tonight? Yeah, it's fun. So I'm just gonna show you guys. Yes, it was uh, with ink. ink. It is my first try. I haven't done this in a while. The water is um, acetone, so it breaks the ink and gives it kind of like a gives a kind of like a uh, almost like a water color look. I'm gonna hit up with some cuticle oil and show you guys the first hand look. Then I'm gonna finish this probably when the live ends because um, I wanna get the live to be. I try to keep all the lives under an hour and a half. Gel would not work because gel wouldn't have wouldn't have that uh, ink ability. You know, you see like um how this kind of disperses gives like a watercolor look. Gel wouldn't have that. You need ink for that. Um, gel wouldn't be able to give you that look. That's why gel wouldn't work for this uh, this type of design. I mean, you can probably do a, a gel design, but we're not gonna have that kind of a watercolor kind of like dispersing look like this, kind of like a translucent. And there you guys go. This is one hand down. Almost kind of like a Japanese like blossom design. I could have done a little more ink here, but that's fine. You know, whatever. Um, a little bit of darkness in here. Yeah. So there you go. The set's done. You guys see how I did the stem work first, then I add the black and later, and it all comes together. Trust the process. Alright guys, I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much.